Good day, YouTube. Today's video is actually kind of fun. We're going to talk about Kubernetes multi-cluster, and we're going to focus on networking. And so the networking here that we're going to focus on is ultimately the CNI stack. And in this case, the CNI stack that I'm going to talk about is Calico. And so this is a little different because here we have two clusters or n number of clusters. And the whole concept here is so that the big IP in this example can load balance traffic to those pods in any one of these clusters. And so within a multi-cluster environment, the gateway, in this case, the big IP, has to know where the pods are. And since we're using cluster IP or big IP directly to pod, big IP's got to know how to route that traffic to the correct cluster, to the correct node, and then, of course, to that pod. And the way that we can do this successfully is using Calico networking as our CNI stack. Now, if you're not familiar with Calico, Calico actually uses BGP peering or uses the BGP protocol to actually go and exchange routing information between Calico pod or between Calico networking running in the cluster and the big IP itself. And so one of the most important things is you have to configure BGP both in the big IP and in in, in Kubernetes using Calico, the good thing is, is is it's super stable, at least from what all the testing that I've done and also from the usage. I did a CNI video about six months ago about usage of CNIs and Calico's right up there. There is multiple organizations using CIS, big IP with Calico in production. And so when it comes to Kubernetes multi-cluster, the way that you network the big IP with the clusters is through Calico, or you can use static routes. But to be honest with you, static routes can might be a little trickier. You're better off using, using Calico. So what will happen is big IP, big IP's peer will be the node IP uh, and, 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 and the the Kubernetes Calico peer would be the big IP. That could be the floating IP or the physical IPs. You can just make them the physicals, actually, if you wanted to. It's, it's perfectly fine because it's just an exchange of routes. So big IP just needs to know where its, where its routes are. So in this example, I have multiple pods deployed. I have coffee pods and tea pods deployed. And we could actually go, we could actually see that if I use this command called get kubectl get pods for all namespaces. But what I don't want to show you is I don't want to expose the addresses. Haha. -ha. Okay, so you can see right here that in this first cluster, I have my Calico pods. And I also have these application pods. So these are just application pods, cafe one and cafe two is the namespace. Um, but you could actually see all of these pods that are running in this first Kubernetes cluster. And what version is th this? is the client. This version right here is Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes 127.6. And in this newer version of Kubernetes, kubectl version, I think this is a newer version, this is, look how nice and clean that is. This is a little bit of a different environment, 128.2. So you're going from one, one cluster to the next. Now, what's nice about having two clusters is there are some changes. There's changes between the different versions. And so, you know, maybe I, I'm installing 128. Maybe it's not my production cluster yet. Maybe it's just a more of a standby cluster. But it does give me the opportunity to, in this case, deploy AB testing or deploy an AB type environment where I'm actually splitting traffic across the two clusters. Why would you want to do that? It's amazing for maintenance. Like availability is, is phenomenal. And with this Kubernetes multi-cluster use case, Big IP allows you to do that. And so watch the space for the next video because the next video is going to be AB testing across the two clusters. But this first video solely focused on networking. So now that I've talked a little bit about the pods that are running, so the pods are actually, in, in both instances, 
the pods are actually the the pods are actually the same. The I'm actually using the same pod deployments in both the clusters. So the pods are the the, the pod environment is is unique in in both clusters, but the pod IP addresses are on a different pod CIDR or pod network. As you can see, 10.246, and in the first cluster, it's um, it's 10. 10. It's the default, the default uh, network that I've picked. Now you you could pick anything. I I just picked uh, 10.244, which is kind of a flannel network, it, but it's fine. I picked that as a slash 16 for my 1.27 cluster, and then for my 128 cluster, I picked uh, 10.246 slash 16. So it really really doesn't matter. But you have to configure Calico to reflect that, and um. Actually, the the insula, insula, installation of Calico is pretty simple. Uh, you go to the Calico web page here. Um, you install the Tigera. It's Tigera operator, Calico operator. Uh, install the CRD. And so once you've got those two things, then you could actually um, start to do the configuration of Calico. And so Ca Ca Calico actually uses a manifest. And so what I can actually show you is I can actually show you that manifest. So if I actually go to this, you can actually see here the actual Calico YAML um, configuration. Let me let me open that up for you guys here so you can actually see it. There's actually this YAML file. Now you can modify this YAML file. It's actually a config map. You could actually modify um, this Calico config YAML file. And this is, a, as you say, this is a template. And so what I did is once I did the install, I did a kubectl, kubectl apply this with the customization. And, and to be honest with you, the only customization that I, that I actually did here was the customization of the CIDR. That's it. There we go. I changed, I changed the, the, the networking. So I applied the networking to the Calico before I basically deployed any application pods. So you'll see here in this environment, um, this is Kubernetes 127. The pod network is of 10 to 44. And in the second cluster, the pod network is um, of a different, let's collect this one and let's go 10 to 46. There we go. 10 to 46. So you can see in the two different clusters. This is so there's two clusters that have two separate pod ciders. And, and we'll talk a little bit about this in a minute. Um, because this is ultimately what the big IP is gonna see. It's gonna see two complete two two different networks, two different clusters. And so it's gonna know how to route to that. So that was the first change that you need to make. And 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 you can do this with a kubectl. Um, simple kubectl apply the config map. And it's actually, there's a really good document that actually goes through this. You can actually see right here, um, you edit in this YAML file, change this network. Um, this is the F5 docs, and then go and apply this. You can see right there, kubectl apply. The, and you'll see, you'll, you'll see, you'll see some, some pod changes, their IP addresses will change. What you also have to have is you have to have this command called um, Calico Cuddle or Calico CTL, which kind of which kind of tells you um, a little bit more about about Calico. So it's not it's not Kube CTL, it's Calico um, CTL, which kind of gives you a little bit of information. So if 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 I go into the first cluster and I actually go and run that Calico get nodes, you can see in my environment right here I have two nodes on this one cluster. This is one twenty seven. There's a master and a worker. And in the second cluster here, there is a, in the second cluster, let's just copy and paste it and it'll work quite nicely. Let's try that again. In the second cluster, yep, there is the same. There's a, uh, a master and a, a master node and a worker node. And I have plans to add more nodes to this, um, but it doesn't really matter. It's just adding more nodes. So, how so once you actually do that that install here if you just follow this 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 guide on how to install this and I'll put this in the I'll put this in the uh, in the docs as well so that you have this um, you can you can kind of go to 
now do two different. So what you have to do within Calico, this is Calico configuration in Kubernetes, is you need to advertise your Calico config. And, and the only thing really that's here is it's of kind BGP configuration. So it's Calico, it's using the project Calico, um, but it's your AS number and it is your peer. So it's two different configurations. One is the BGP configuration, which is the AS number, and the second one is the peering. So we can see this by looking here at the, this is the global command that just allows me to run the, um, the Calico CTL, right? So I've just, I've put this in there so it makes sense. This is the second one. So here we go. So this is just the AS number. So I'm using, I'm using this AS number um, 4564512. Uh, and I'm using the same AS number on big IP as well. So everything has to be within the same AS. That's just BGP. And then the second thing is my peer. So I only have one big IP. Um, you would you would specify your big IP, and this would be for both clusters. So this kind of like what you kind of like what you would do. You would just specify your peer. And the easiest way to do that is just create these two YAML files, and you just do Calico create and Calico create. And now what you can do is you can actually go and get you can actually do a Calico CTL BGP peer, so you can actually see your peering of BGP. You can see it here. There is my peering. So that's what I'm sending to Big IP. That Big IP is my peer. And so if you look at that diagram again, we'll go look at that diagram. Um, in the diagram that we were referring to, the this is the Big IP that's its peer. So within the cluster, you're saying, hey, Big IP, you are my peer. And in the same thing here, hey, Big IP, you are my peer, so that we can peer together. And um, that, I mean, that that is it. It's just those two very, very, very simple um, commands to, to do this. So that was a copy there. And so that, that was pretty much um, that command that um, I ran from there. So here you can see. So the goal is for these nodes to be shared. Now, once you have that established, you can then go on to your big IP and set up your big IP. So on the big IP, there's a few things that you have to do. The first thing that you have to do on the big IP is enable BGP. So we enable the BGP through um, through the route domain, right? So you just go into the big IP, go to route domain, route domain zero, and just drag over and say, I want big IP to be part of that. That 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 is it. And then on big IP, go and set up your neighbors. So in my instance, a neighbor, the neighbor is the big IP, the, the neighbor is the Kubernetes nodes. So in my big IP here, I have a couple of neighbors. And so it, it would be a neighbor for each node. So if we go back to this diagram within big IP, you'd basically say neighbor, all of the, all of the nodes. So for example, there's there's two nodes here, there's two nodes here. So ultimately I'm gonna have I'm gonna have four neighbors. It, it, it's that simple. Just put the IP addresses of the nodes. So that is all that's required. And then Calico will just go ahead and happily share, share the information. Now if we go and look on the big IP and we actually go look at its routing table, um, I actually ran this earlier, and so you can see right here, there is is the advertisement. So what it's doing is it's saying 10.244 and 10.244. And the peer is 6665. This is the first cluster. And then here's the second cluster for the different networks. So Big IP knows how to route to all these pods. Now let's go and take a look how this how this actually works. We, we can actually go onto one of the nodes and we can run this um, cool command called Calico node status and it will actually show us. And so if we go here, it will actually show us. And that's what this is what's really interesting. There is this node to mesh concept. So there's a global, which is the device itself, and then there's the node to mesh. So node to mesh is interesting because node to mesh is basically um, the traffic comes in for that for that mesh or for that network to this node. So in this instance right here, there's there, there, there's different networks. So if you want to get to if you want to get to a a, a pod that's on the 66, 66 device, that, that's device 66, that's a worker, 
um, that's where it kind of kicks in. It's like node, it's node, node to node for the mesh. So that's how the two nodes communicate, and then there's a global. So the more nodes you're going to see, you're going to have node to node mesh. You'll see all of your IPs there, and you'll see the established, and you'll see that's up. And so that's kind of the that's kind of like what's showing you. So if you see here, um, I don't know. The, okay, so all of these ten two forty fours, these are all on one. These are all on one on one pod, and so big IP will will route will route to the worker node through the node to node mesh. So ten dot two forty four dot zero. You can see in the routing table right here that it's ten, and this has been summarized already. Um, you can see to see based on the way that it was summarized within BGP. This is BGP. I, I didn't do anything here. But to get to 66 for this whole subnet here, it will just route, it will route to there. So for example, I could actually go and pick, let's pick this this first one right here. This is 10.244.0.66. We could actually go to the big IP and we could actually ping that IP. Let's see here. And so... Big IP knows how to route to 10.244.0.64 because it's simply just an advertised route within this routing table. It, it doesn't really know where it is necessarily other than just through a simple network route. And so what that means now is that it can get to the 10.244 cluster, which is which is right here. But it can also get to let's 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 pick this first pod. This is 10.246.90.136. It can also get to to this one as well. And so that means that um, that means that Big IP has full access to the pod networks within two clusters. So that is the absolute most important thing that you need to do within Kubernetes for a multi-cluster is make sure that the gateway can route to the pod network. We don't want to use node port here. If we were using node port, that, that, I think that defeats the purpose. We really want to do big IP to pod um, just so we can bypass kube proxy. Um, you, you can actually, your pod can actually be an ingress controller. So you can actually go big IP directly to an ingress controller such as Nginx, that would be perfect. Or a different in ingress controller, it could also be SPK. It really doesn't matter. Um, but this this is how to do uh, Kubernetes multi-cluster networking using Calico, and so using the BGP peering um, to the pods. The next video that's going to come up um, that I'm going to that I'm going to release next would be Kubernetes multi-cluster AB deployment. So. To be able to see that video and to get notification, make sure that you have the notification bell on. If you're not subscribed, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video. If you have any comments, please leave me some comments. Uh, in the description, I will put this link, this to GitHub repos or this GitHub repo of the content. What I will also do is I will also put the configuration pages for both how to configure Calico on Big AP and how to configure Calico on the Calico page. Um, and then um, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Thank you very much.